Hi, I'm Mary Beth Quinn, a mixed media collage artist from Nashville, Tennessee. And I recently did a commission. It was a very tender one. It was in a memoriam of someone, someone I did not know. So that always presents a, a bit of a challenge in that you are trying to represent something that you're not necessarily familiar with. So as I was moving through this painting, I started thinking about how in years past, I really got to know my process of figuring out where I was in the process. I had certain things that would show up. For years, they just seemed like obstacles. And now I realize they're more like a signpost or a guidepost. When they show up, I know sort of where I am in the process. And I came to this by just painting over and over and over. That's really the only way you can get to know your own guideposts. Yours may look different than mine, but I thought I would share mine because what I've discovered is that so many of our obstacles as artists tend to be very similar, if not the same. I thought I would just share mine and walk you through this process of this painting because, as I said, it was important. I, I wanted to do well in taking the little bit that I knew of this person and finding a way to represent it on the canvas. Yet I, it was little information. And so I was very mindful about the purpose of this while also feeling a little bit of the uh, pressure of that, of, of wanting to do it well. And I think that made these guideposts a little bit more pronounced where I could see them very clearly. And I thought this would be maybe a good thing to share. So here you'll, you'll just see me putting on the very initial layer of collage. I will eventually get most of this covered with collage, but this initial layer are things that I'm pretty clear. They won't show much, if at all. But I try to get a lot on there that gives me a, a map, maybe, or something to work with. You saw me earlier, the little really loose flower figures are done with temper paint sticks. I'll generally put those on just to help myself try to lay out the flow of the painting or see if what I'm thinking is going to work. And then I start, of course, just covering it up and it's just there underneath gently guiding me. So now I'm tearing apart little pieces of paper to represent other flowers and get that ring of flowers that I want sort of being prominent in one part of the painting and then moving to uh, like where they just sort of fly away out another corner of the painting. That was, that was the idea that I had. So as I launched in, I thought about the first thing that shows up that really reminds me that knowing your painting is done is not as easy as it sounds. For years, I would run into one of these guideposts and I would listen to it and I would stop. One of the things I hear a lot of artists say is, I don't really like what I'm getting. I'm thinking about just throwing this out. And what I always want to say is, we'll just keep working with it. But I get what they're saying. It is so frustrating to sometimes go through this process because it takes longer than we think. It doesn't look good nearly as quickly as we want. And that's uncomfortable. It's, it's hard to live with that. So my first thing that shows up in which I know 
that the thing I need to do is just keep going is that my brain will start telling me that this needs to hurry up. It starts trying to rush the process. Now I did a whole other video on rushing the process. So um, I might be repeating some of these things here, but I want to for people that maybe haven't seen that video. It is a very common thing, I think, for our brains to get uncomfortable with the process and start prompting us to wrap it up because it feels uncomfortable and unknown. And this might come in the form of thoughts like, well, this should be, this should be done by now, or this isn't turning out the way I thought. I need to figure out how to fix it. Now I'll stop right here and just say, I'm putting on my first glazing layer. Now this is something that I will do when um, I want to even things out, or in this case, I decided that the background of paint that I put on this was far too dark for what I was wanting to convey, but I did like some of the dark areas. So what I did was just get some uh, very light colored lavender, grayish lavender, and put a lot of golden glazing medium in it. And it thins out the paint, makes it semi-transparent, and now I'm just putting that loosely over a lot of the surface, even the collage that I've put down. It just brightened it up a bit, took away some of that intensity, and then allowed me to have a surface that I could work with and not always be struggling with the darkness of it. So that's what's happening here. That brush that I keep bringing in is a dry brush. So I'll take what's, what's wet there with that glazing and I'll even it out with just this big dry brush. So that really helped the surface. It helped brighten it up a bit and now I'm heading back into the layering process. But back to my first guide post, I just wanted to add that, you know, you can know when you're creating something, I think we all can, that our brain is gonna to wanna to brush the process. It's just, I don't know, it's just what it does. And our brains don't seem very comfortable with process. So I just had to decide that I would always just go further. When I saw this arise, that the only thing that it meant, even though I might be having thoughts like, I should wrap this up, or uh, maybe this is done, even though, you know, it clearly wasn't done. Maybe I'm close to finishing. No, you're not close to finishing. That's, that is a sure sign that what you really need to do is buckle down and really commit to going all the way. So just keep going. So that's what I do when I hit this stage. I realize that I can go a lot further even when my brain is telling me that I can't. It's telling me that I'm near being done and I know that I'm actually in the very uncomfortable, messy middle where nothing looks good. Uh, nothing can be assessed at this point because it's just, I'm just laying down things to work with. So, you know, it'd be like trying to judge a building when all you have there is the foundation or the big hole in the ground with, with some, with some uh, framework coming out of it. That's no time to be judging that structure. What you wanna be looking for is, is the foundation stable? Do we have the right materials to work with? So it's really about me learning how to think differently about this process, but it doesn't happen overnight. I have to do this, I feel like, with every single painting. I guess that's just a normal part of the process. So I'm into stage two, really, of collage pieces. Now I'm trying to add in a lot of coverage for the surface. I'm trying to add in a lot of interesting pieces. I'm trying to make some really dark and bold areas as well as some contrasting lighter areas and really sort of flesh those out. Now everything looks very disjointed and 
separate right now, but what I have learned about this process over time is that I can't fix that at this stage and I don't have to. It will fix itself if I put on enough layers and just keep going. And that leads me to my second guidepost, really. When I start having thoughts like, why isn't it coming together? I've already added so many collage pieces. I've already added so many layers. I now know that that is my clue, that there's a lot more layers to come, that I actually haven't gone far enough. When my brain starts to tell me that I have added enough, and why doesn't this look good yet? Then I can just know that that's my misunderstanding. It actually requires more layers. And there's my clue. That's what I start thinking. And so at this point, I am sort of fighting with it. That's just part of the process. I will... <laughs> think on the one hand, this should be coming together. I've already added so many layers. I should be in a different place by now. All those shoulds are my big tip off that I can just relax and get back in the process and not think about how many layers there are, not have a problem with it. Just keep going. It's going to work itself out. Trust the process. So that's really what I'm doing here. I'm adding this big piece of soft lavender paper over that polka dot paper, which really is just a piece of tissue that I put a stencil over, a stencil that had all of those dots. And then I ran a uh, some spackling over the top. And that's what those dots are. They're very highly textured dots made with uh, wall spackling. And I thought they were so cute in this painting. Right now, they look sort of like they're just floating on the top, but I know that if I can take this process as far as it needs to go, then in the end, it won't look like that. I have to remind myself all the time that it's not supposed to look good until the end. I don't know where we get that as artists, but it seems that we all do. We all feel like it should look good right, almost right from the start, when really it's the opposite. When things are in process, when they're becoming, especially when they're multi-dimensional, layered compositions, they're not going to look good while you're in that layering stage they're going to look like a bunch of layers. And so learning to just accept this process and then maybe enjoy more of it has really been uh, something that stretched me. But the more that I do it, the more I find I am really am beginning to enjoy my art practice and my art process. So here you see me doing another layer of glazing. I will add color and some glazing medium to put glazing in different areas. You know, this area that I'm in right here is kind of dark. It has a purplish tone to it. So I made the glaze to match that. If I had used that lighter white glaze over this area, it would have sort of a, a really prominent, um, that ghostly sort of effect and a frosty sort of effect, and I didn't want that there. I just wanted to smooth out what was happening underneath the glaze. So now I've got my tempera paint sticks back out, and I'm redefining some of those flower structures, just loosely. I don't really like, usually, I don't like my flowers to be too spelled out. I like them to be partially there, I like them to be a bit uh, mysterious and whimsical. So that's, I purposely try to keep it loose and incomplete in many ways. So now I'm just adding some really light paper for some bigger flowers that I want to be there 
but also want them to be delicate and not make too bold of a statement. So that's what you see me adding there. So now I'm adding some paper over that polka dot area that I said looked kind of stark at first, but I knew that it would be blended in by the end. As you can see, um, there are many papers that I put on at the very first that are almost entirely covered over, but they still poke through. And I can see some people saying, well, why don't you just skip that first layer then if it's all gonna be covered up. But if you really look closely, you do see pieces of it. And the little bit that shows through adds to the whole. It adds to that feeling of depth. I had someone comment once and I thought this was so perfect uh, that it was like looking down through water. You see what's clear, uh, what's clearly defined on the surface and then you see what's just below the surface and then you see the hints of those things that are way down deeper in the water just shadows really and I love that because that is what I'm going for that is what I love that is how I very much experience life to be much of the time we only see part of it really clearly and the rest is just some variation of a hint of what is actually there. And I love depicting that in my work. So here I'm just tearing little pieces of mulberry paper and I'm putting them, uh, it's, it's a bit of a tedious process, but I actually cut out a lot of times that I did that in this in the making of this painting because there were so many but i add a bunch of just little petals of mulberry paper and it adds dimension to those flowers and keeps them airy and varied and looking the way that i want them to look so now i'm adding some tissue paper that i have painted on some very very loose botanical structures like leaves and stems and I think in the end I decided many of these I did not like and so I wound up covering over them or painting over them but for now this is where they are I I never hesitate to try putting something on the surface I used to be really scared about making mistake and now I'm trusting the process more and realizing I can solve those problems later. So if, I'm, if I have an impulse to do something or I'm attracted to a piece of paper or an idea, I just do it. And then I trust that as I move forward, I can figure out how to solve that if it becomes a problem. So now I'm adding dimension to those bigger flowers you just saw there. Uh, with some mulberry paper so they don't just look like a flat one-dimensional flower now they look like they have petals and depth and layers so I am getting closer I'm adding smaller pieces I'm adding pops of color and shadow like you see right there with that darker paper. Now I'm going to put other papers around the edge of it to sort of feather it out and even it out. I've put those cute little orange flowers on there that I made with uh, some paper on the jelly plate and I'm adding paper over them to, to even out some of their edges as well. And this leads me to the third guidepost that lets me know um, when this painting is done and it's the final one and it is it's not done until i love it for years it sounds ridiculous but i would call things done and also not like them really or only kind of like them and it took me a long time to finally realize if i don't love it it's not done that's all that means just i can look at it and say do i love it 
And if the answer is no or uh, I'm not sure, then I know that I'm not done and my only job is to keep going further. Most of my paintings, I have realized, just don't go far enough. When I feel like there's a problem or I don't like them, I just haven't gone far enough. I haven't taken it to its true culmination. And it's because that's, that's uncomfortable. It's hard to do, sticking with it. But I really, I really believe in this. You know, if, if you find yourself stuck with your painting, just try. Try pushing it a lot further and see what happens. Well, here's some close-ups of the painting. There is a lot going on there, and I'm so pleased with the layering that I finally got, but it was hard. This was a hard one to push through. I thought so many times, oh, I'm just not getting it. I'm not, I'm, I'm sort of failing in this endeavor, and, but I kept pushing through, and I'm very, very pleased with what I got in the end. And once again, it shows me that I can trust the process and I can trust myself to solve those problems. So here's a little mock-up where it's done. If you would like to learn more about painting with paper, you can find information about my introductory class, Painting with Paper. It's such a fun class. It's a great place to start. And if you're really wanting to push your work in into to a more intuitive mixed media collage area. This is a fabulous class, 10 hours of instruction, and you will come out the other side with different work. Your work will have changed by the end. So once again, thank you for joining me today. I always love being with you. <laughs>